Are there unbeatable strategies on bigger boards? What happens as the board gets bigger? As the board gets bigger, the problems get more complicated, but it is still true that the first player is trying to get an even number of long chains, and the second player is trying to get an odd number of long chains. Except now, we can get quite late in the game, and it isn't clear whether the number of chains is going to be two or three or four. Or often that gets resolved before one of the player one of the players resolves it before their player realizes what's it's been resolved. No matter how big the board, does a long chain still count as three or more, or does the definition yes. of long chain change? No, no. The reason the reason a long chain is long, suppose we had a bigger board, okay, is that no matter where I play, you have the choice, say it's Y is you, you have the choice after you take one of either completing your turn here and say there's other stuff over here, who knows, more complicated, whatever. You have the choice now going first or second over here. You can take both of these and make the first move over here, or you can avoid taking them here, and then after I take these, you, I have to go over here and you get to go second over here. So when there's three or more, and, and I have to give, and the only thing I can do is give you three or more, then the player who is getting this long chain gets to decide whether he wants to go first or second on the rest of the board. And that's a huge advantage, because presumably one or the other is going to get most of the points on the rest of the board. And if it's a, depending on which player it is, if he's a, clever enough to work all this out, he'll make the right choice and get there, see. Whereas if there's only two, so maybe over here we have something like this, see. If there's only two boxes, then <clears throat> I, can do, I can be foolish and go here, which gives you the choice of whether to take them or not, just like you've had here. That's a very bad move. The better move, when there's like two, is to cut them in the middle, and then there's no way the player, the other, the, your opponent can play here without making a box. So he's now first to go, he's forced to go first on the rest of the board. If he doesn't take these boxes now, he goes first over on the rest of the board, and then I just pick up these boxes before I continue the rest of the board. So when you're, when you when there's a choice, when there's a box or two lying around by itself, it's always advantageous to take it. When there's an option not to take it, because it's like this, you have the option of making a, a move which leads your opponent to a double cross. Uh, that's often a good deal. You do that, and then he get basically he becomes double crossed because <laughs> you've switched now the 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 parity after the double cross after uh, the rule really is the first player is trying at any point in the game trying to get the number of long chains plus the number of double crosses to be even. And usually, early in the game, the number of double crosses is zero for most of this time. But once there is a double cross, then that flips whether you're trying to go even or odd. And, and so <clears throat> the winning player usually cleans up the end of the game and gets all the long chains. On a big board, there may be many. But the score is likely to be very lopsided. And usually, one player gets control and cleans the whole thing up.